I'm Colin Exelby, and I provide financial planning for business owners and their families that make sense. Do you wonder how Americans with significantly higher incomes often pay less tax than others with lower incomes? In my opinion, it comes down to three things. The government wants Americans to have a roof over their head, have a job, and be productive. There are many tax benefits provided to incentivize you to provide shelter, jobs, and enhance productivity for others. Wouldn't it be fantastic to make tax-free income renting your own home? What about potentially writing it off as a business expense at the same time? Impossible? Well, it is possible with IRC Section 280G, which allows business owners to rent their homes to their business. What is the Augusta Rule IRC Section 280A? Affectionately called the Augusta Rule, this part of the tax code can be extremely valuable to homeowners and especially business owners. In my opinion, this is one of the most underutilized strategies to increase cash flow and reduce taxes for business owners. Now, if you're a golf fan, you know that every year a major PGA Tour event called the Masters, you know, the one with the green jacket, it's played in the small town of Augusta, Georgia. Golfers and their fans literally take over the town for roughly a week each year. For decades, because of a lack of hotels, homeowners in the area rent their homes to people who take over the town. Section 280A allows these homeowners to rent their homes for up to 14 days each year without having to report any of the income on their individual tax return. You heard that right, tax-free income for these homeowners. And that's why this rule is often referred to as the Augusta Tax Loophole, Section 280A. But you don't have to live in Augusta, Georgia to take advantage of this strategy. The Augusta Rule applies to anyone who owns a home in the United States, provided that your home is not your primary place of business. So how does it work? As long as the home you own is not your primary place of business, you can rent it out for up to 14 days and not report that income on your individual tax return. The rent does not need to be consecutively, but it must be 14 days or less. If you go even one day over, the entire amount of rental income must be captured on your individual tax return, so be careful. The rent you charge must be reasonable and in line with what the local rental market supports at that time charging $2,000 per night when comparable houses rent for $500 per night is obviously not in line. The easiest way to find a value for the use of the home is to use a vacation or short-term rental website to find homes of a similar size and location and use the cost per square foot to identify a reasonable rental rate. Apps like Airbnb, HomeAway, and Verbo have made this process much simpler over the past few years. Each day, millions of Americans search for short-term rentals in places all over the country. You can rent your house to individuals looking for vacation opportunities, or you can rent your house to a business owner who intends to use it for business purposes like a photo shoot or business meetings. Do you live in an area that has an annual event that's well-frequented, such as an annual four-day concert, South by Southwest, the Super Bowl, political conventions, a graduation week like the Naval Academy, or a national golf or tennis tournament? Do you live in an area people love to visit, such as wine country, or a ski area, or a fishing destination? Renting your home could be a great way to add some extra tax-free income to your cash flow. Can you have more than one primary residence? What's even better? Do you own multiple homes? Do you stay at that home for more than 15 days or 10% of the days rented out? If so, even though the IRS only allows you to have one primary residence, each of your secondary homes is eligible for this strategy and could be rented out to receive tax-free income. For example, let's say you live in my hometown, Towson, Maryland, for nine months of the year. You also have a summer cottage in Annapolis, Maryland that you live in for two months in the summer. And you have a ski cabin in Wisp, Maryland, where you spend three weeks in January. Each one of these properties could be rented out 
for tax-free income up to 14 days a year if you choose. What are additional tax strategies for business owners? Okay, so are you ready for the real kicker? What if you also own a business? Can you rent your residence to your business? Yes, you can, but make sure you do it correctly. If you do it correctly, you can receive tax-free rental income and the business can get a deduction resulting in tax savings there as well. How on earth can this be? Stick with me and I'll explain it. The good and the bad of the internet is that there's a ton of information out there. Unfortunately, it often only tells one side of the story. If you look for information about the Augusta rule and how it applies to business owners, you will often find generalities talking about how easy it is to rent your home to your business. You'll also find people who will flat out say that you can't rent to your business. So which is it? Well, the answer is you can definitely do this, but it must be done correctly. Now, when would I rent my house to my company? As the business owner, you could use your home to host different types of business events. Do you have an annual employee get together or staff meetings? Do you have quarterly, semi-annual or annual meetings with your board of directors or your co-owners? Businesses need to have meetings to operate effectively. Board meetings, tax planning meetings, retirement plan meetings, shareholder meetings, and strategic planning meetings are all necessary when running a successful business. Now, under current tax laws, there is not a deduction allowed for entertainment facilities. So you shouldn't rent your home to entertain clients, but you can entertain employees. That is different. Now, in many cases, when arranging a meeting, a business would book a local hotel meeting room or even a ballroom if the company is large enough, arrange for refreshments, breakfast, lunch, or dinner, and use audiovisual equipment for presentations. The venue would charge for the space, state and local taxes, food, the AV equipment, and any other services that you may need for your meeting. Now, I'm willing to bet that you have many of these same services in your personal residence. You have chairs, tables, refreshments, Wi-Fi, television or computer monitors, restrooms. Instead of putting money into the pockets of these venues, why not put it in your own pocket? This is IRC 280AG, or the 14-day rental rule. It allows business owners to claim a home rental fee as a business expense. And remember, as long as you don't rent out your home for more than 14 days, that income to your personal bank account is tax-free. Now, ideally, your business would have a separate tax ID number and be either an S-Corp or a C-Corp to take advantage of this tax strategy. This creates separation between you and your business. How to implement the strategy. Your first step is to do a search for local venues to have your meetings and price out potential contracts. It's important that if you're having meetings of two to five people, that you are pricing out 500 person ballrooms. Use common sense to figure out what type of venue makes sense. Two to three quotes should be sufficient. You'll want to create an invoice from you to your business, just like any other rental contract. This invoice should contain all the charges and reflect the comparable rates from your search. These invoices would come from you, the property owner renting out your qualified residence, to be paid by your business, the entity renting out the home instead of a typical business meeting venue. Make sure you pay the invoice from the business bank account and are able to show proof of the payment. To be a legitimate business deduction, it's always a good idea to have documentation of the meeting. Meeting minutes showing who was present, what was discussed, and signed by each attendee is good practice and is also good for your annual business reporting requirements. Okay, Colin, but what about the naysayers? I have often seen people point to this part of IRS Publication 538 to show that this strategy can't be used. As you can see, it says that the expense is not tax deductible if owed to a related person until you make the payment and the corresponding amount is included in the related person's gross income. 
See that it doesn't say taxable income, it says gross income. So unlike the person who rents their secondary home to a friend or a coworker for a few days and doesn't report the income, if you don't include the income received from your business in your personal gross income, you may screw up this strategy and cause the business not to be able to deduct the expense. And this is where CPAs or internet gurus who frown upon this strategy throw up their hands. Well, the rental income the company pays to the owner must be reported on a Form 1099. The IRS requires that rental amounts paid in excess of $600 to individuals must be reported to the recipient and the IRS on the Form 1099. However, while the income must be shown in order to have a business deduction, the income can remain tax-free by reporting that income on a rental income schedule, Schedule E on the Form 1040. These are the three steps for proper reporting of the income. Step number one, report the income number three on the form. Step number two, Zero out the rental income amount through other deductions, number 19 in the same column. And step three, footnote the deduction as no taxable income due to IRC 280AG in the space provided. This is exactly how rental income should be reported if the home is rented through a vacation rental website. And that is how you would do it in this case as well. Same forms. Follow these steps and you could be well on your way to increasing your tax-free cash flow and reducing your taxes on your business. Now, the tax code is huge. In fact, it's so large, there's a debate as to how large it really is. A quick internet search brings up many articles speculating it is over 70,000 pages long. Well, according to PolitiFact, if you download the Internal Revenue Code from the United States Code, also known as Title 26 in the document, the file is 6,550 pages long. The 70,000 number adds to that IRS regulations and revenue rulings, and most importantly, case law covering court proceedings surrounding the tax code. That's right, over 90% of the pages related to the tax code are strategies to pay less tax. Use the tax code to your advantage. Now, if you have any questions on how you could potentially employ these strategies, book a meeting with me at my website, celestialwm.com, or speak with your CPA. Now, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like. Make sure you smash that subscribe button so you're notified whenever I produce a new financial planning video. And if you have any comments that you'd like to add, please do so in the comments below.